this video is about the concept of heterozygote advantage. This explains the way that a heterozygous genotype, an organism with a heterozygous genotype and resulting phenotype, will actually have a higher evolutionary fitness than either homozygous genotypes and the resulting phenotypes of those. Remembering that evolutionary fitness refers to one's ability to survive and reproduce. So the classic example here is sickle cell anemia. There are two alleles. There's the HBA allele, which codes for the normal and functioning beta globin protein that helps carry oxygen in your blood. If you have this version, this allele, then your red blood cells are that classic little belly button shape. If you have the HBS or sickle beta globin allele, those cells are actually shaped like a half moon or a sickle and these cells very they do not carry oxygen well at all. And if you're somebody that has two copies of this sickle allele, then you are said to have sickle cell anemia. And the symptoms of this are because you have these long thin blood cells, they can cause clots in your veins and arteries. Um, they actually die earlier than normal shaped red blood cells, so you're not getting as much oxygen flowing. Right? Oxygen is crucial to energy production through cellular respiration, so people without this, um, these cells that carry oxygen well, they're very tired, they're fatigued during a point called crisis, which is when um, the symptoms of sickle cell are a lot worse. There's um, extreme pain, so even you know, a slight brush can cause severe pain, um, yellowing of the eyes, and in general, nowadays with modern medicine, people um, with sickle cell anemia live to about 40 or 50. Um, before modern medicine, it was around 12 or 13. So sickle cell anemia has a lot of very strong effects on people that have it. There is one bonus to having sickle-shaped cells that do not carry oxygen well. People with these shaped cells cannot support the malaria-causing parasite. So the malaria is caused by a protist that gets in your red blood cells and lives happily. And of course, that makes you very, very sick and you can die from malaria. Not good. But if you don't have oxygen in your cells, then the parasite needs oxygen for its you know, functions and it can't survive. So if you have sickle-shaped cells, you can't get malaria. Back to heterozygote advantage, um, if you are homozygous for normal shaped cells and have this shape, right, the positive side, you're not going to have any sickle cell symptoms. But you are susceptible to malaria. If you are homozygous for the sickle hemoglobin, right, your cells look like this, you do show those symptoms of sickle cell anemia that I just described, but you can't get malaria. If you're heterozygous and have one allele for normal and one allele for the sickle hemoglobin, you produce both shapes of cells. So you do not show any of the symptoms, those crisis symptoms of sickle cell, but you also get that same benefit and that you cannot get malaria. So you can see that being heterozygous allows you an evolutionary advantage in that um, not being able to get malaria is obviously going to help you survive and reproduce better.